I was mentioning to Aaron last night uh, after we introduced each other, um, our, ourselves to each other, um, he, he told me about his academia focus, and I was impressed. And um, then he asked me, well, what's my role? And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a salesman. And um, so I had to explain that, that, that um, although I'm a salesman, um, my experience as a sales leader has been to use scientific data and evidence to help drive business results. Um, I recognize uh, also that uh, I am standing between you and the restroom or lunch. <laughs> so uh, let me uh, let me move quickly. Um, when um, I, my, my background is with American Express. I spent, uh, and, and I'm still a consultant to the company, uh, I've been there over 40 years. Um, and in 1999, when I started working with uh, Fred Luskin and another PhD, uh, Rick Aberman from the University of Minnesota, one of the reasons that we got together was because we were confident that we could improve business results if we could teach people emotional competence skills. Um, these are the main elements uh, from Daniel Goleman's work. Um, and so we set off on this adventure to see if we could actually uh, um, uh, prove this. Um, before I get into the results, I want to just talk about the one hurdle that seems to be the biggest challenge for all of us is self-regulation. And the basis in that is that uh, our brains are 10 or 12,000, modern brain is 10, 12,000 years old, and it is predisposed to um, uh, being um, focused on fight or flight when we are in a point of challenge. Um, and um, the, that process, if we go back to the time when um, folks were guarding their cave mouths with their spears, um, that process uh, worked real well because when they uh, experienced that saber-toothed tiger um, and they fought the battle, uh, as soon as the battle was over, uh, this massive dose of uh, cortisol and, um, and adrenaline would leave their bodies and they could go on with their life. Well, the, the same brain that we had then is the same brain that pretty much we have now with the, the exception of a veneer of analytical uh, information that's starting to, to force, uh, fester in. Um, and what happens is when we are on the highway and somebody cuts us off and we get angry, the cortisol starts to spill in but unlike fighting the saber-toothed tiger, we have no way of getting rid of the cortisol and the adrenaline, and so we get to work, and we find a disgruntled customer, and uh, that kind of gets us irritated, and then we go get our coffee, and uh, our favorite mocha, lapa coffee, whatever it is that, I don't drink coffee, but all these sophisticated coffees that are out there. By gosh, someone has taken the last one, and we, and we, we bang our coffee mug down and it breaks and we think, say things like, well, that's the last straw. Well, what, what really has been happening is that this layering of this cortisol has been building and building and building and there's no way to get rid of it. So what's the remedy? Um, we started teaching what we have trademarked as mind skills. There are things that we can do with our minds that tell our brain whether or not they, that brain should secrete some cortisol or not secrete some uh, cortisol. Um, there is work, neuroscience of uh, leadership uh, by Rock at, uh, and another colleague of his at uh, uh, in New York University, and they teach th us that our brains are prepared um, to fight any change that wants to come along. 
and that it's natural. The, the, the brain has so much to do that it wants to resist anything that's new. And so in our work, we had to recognize that phenomena, and so we built systems to build neural pathways in the brain so that habits could be built much more easily. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell, in his book, um, The Outliers, in one of the early chapters, talks about 10,000 hours, and he reiterates the same learning that Rock brought to the table with his, uh, with his work. And where does forgiveness fit into all of this? Um, one of the phenomena that, uh, that we saw regularly with um, the people in our pilots was they would get frustrated with their failures and they did not have a process in place to forgive themselves. And so we began teaching them that process. And the backside of that was they, they didn't oftentimes have a process in place where they could forgive the inappropriate leadership that they got and or received. And um, we taught them how to deal with that as well so that they could be free to go back and be that creative, innovative person that they had the capacity and talent to be. So what were the results? We spent eight and a half years um, to Kenan's point, um, measuring people's ability to manage their emotions. We would test them before we started. So we would do emotional competence testing. Then we would teach them um, a series of mind skills. Um, and, and, and I'll give you the process in a moment. And then when we were done with our training, we, backed at, we tested them again. And we measured what was their emotional competence um, uh, in, based on these points, their, their stress levels, their anger scores, positive states, uh, vitality, uh, overall uh, well-being. And we found dramatically that their stress levels went down, their anger scores went down, and all those other positive scores went up. Now, that's, that's all well and good, but here's, a, here's a, an interesting question. Will business buy this on only those factors alone? And the answer is no, they will not. Um, the one thing that will, they will buy is that uh, productivity goes up. And in our research, um, we found out that the average productivity of all of the people that went through our programs went up 25% over their peers. And we tracked all of that. We went back to people's uh, productivity levels um, when they started the program. We took a uh, study group and did, gave them no training whatsoever, and then measured their productivity uh, six months later. And sure enough, the people that we were training in emotional competence skills, not only all, did all those positive human things happen, but their productivity was up 25% over their, their colleagues. So how do we do this? Um, we measured their, their EQ baselines up front. We, ta we took them through a, a, a day's work of uh, workshops where we taught them a whole series of mind skills. We brought in outside people in their world. We asked them to each bring a, um, an observer, somebody from work and somebody from outside of work, to volunteer to give them feedback. We then um, gave them an individual development plan where they could follow that, that model that was gonna be most useful for them personally. We had them introduce that IDP to their observers. And so the observers gave them feedback every, every two weeks for 15 minutes during the six month period of time. And then we had these same participants participate in um, coaching uh, phone calls, conference calls with our PhDs and when we finished, we went back and did the, uh, the back testing, in, which I already shared with you. Um, just, uh, and this was last year, we, we started as a formal company, we went live, and um, how we are building our awareness is um, we have these, this EQ, not IQ, is the differentiator in attaining optimal performance uh, free workshop 
it, it is not totally free. Um, we, we do charge for expenses. And so I've been traveling up and down the East Coast um, doing this EQ, IQ uh, workshop and enlightening people about why emotional competence is so much more valuable than intellect in this day and age. And uh, that's been working real well. We have a second one called Socialization, Neuroscience of Leadership and Neuroeconomics. And we also have a monthly newsletter. And so that's how we've been building our business. And I think I made the, uh, the timeline.